Hi, my name is Yasmin, and this is my presentation on elements of a crime. Starting off with a summary offense. This is an offense which is resolved quickly without a jury or indictment. They are less serious offenses and are punishable by different sets of laws. Some examples are cause disturbance, harassing telephone calls, or trespassing, and some more. They can be punishable by community service and or a fine up to $5,000. Summary offenses usually are dealt with in the local court in front of a magistrate. A magistrate has less judicial authority than a judge. The courts over which they preside hear less serious matters and do not have a jury. This picture shows a bit of irony as there is no indictment for a summary offense. An example of a summary offense would be trespassing, which means that you enter the owner's land or property without permission. Basically, it means to intrude on a property that is not yours without permission. Moving on to the indictable offenses. Now, these are the more serious crimes, which can include murder, acts of terrorism, drug trafficking, treason, and more. An example of this would be the O.J. Simpson case, as it was a very serious offense that he committed, which includes murder. The difference between indictable offenses and summary offenses is that the indictable offense is a very serious charge, and it can take a long time to be dealt with. Plus, the sentences will be more severe than a summary offense. Next is criminal negligence. Everyone is criminally negligent who A. in doing anything or B. in omitting to do anything that it is his duty to do shows wanton or reckless disregard for the lives or safety of other pe people. So basically, you are ignoring any red flags about something and putting people at risk because of it. An example of this would be the R. V. Tutton case. This was a case in where the parents of a diabetic child refused to give him the insulin he needed as they believed that he was healed by God. This caused the child to die. The parents were charged with causing their son's death by criminal negligence and also manslaughter. The parents were both found guilty. Looking at the cartoon, you can see that it is describing negligence as you see the boss is purposely ignoring the applicant's record and that is basically what criminal negligence means. Moving on to willful blindness. Willful blindness is a term used in law to describe a situation in which a person seeks to avoid civil or criminal liability for a wrongful act by intentionally keeping themselves unaware of facts that would render him or her liable or implicated. A court can properly find willful blindness only where it can almost be said that the defendant actually knew. He suspected the fact, he realized its probability, but he refrained from obtaining the final confirmation because he wanted, in the event, to be able to deny knowledge. This, and this alone, is willful blindness. In other words, you are refusing to retain information on a crime and refusing to actually say you knew about the crime 100%. But rather, you are saying you may have had an idea of it, but cannot be sure. Looking at the cartoon, you see that the young child is refusing to make it certain he knows the right of ignorance. This describes willful blindness on a non-criminal level. But on a criminal level, an example could be if you had a suspicion a crime was going on, but you refused to find out for sure. Now going on to accessory after the fact. An accessory after the fact is someone who assists, one, someone who has committed a crime, two, after the person has committed the crime, three, with knowledge that the person committed the crime, and four, with the intent to help the person avoid arrest or punishment. In other words, you are basically helping out with a part of the crime, whether that be planning it, helping with what happens after the crime, knowing that a crime is being committed, or helping the criminal or criminals escape punishment. A case explaining this would be the R. V. Vinette case. Vinette pleaded guilty to manslaughter, and this trial was for an associate that was being charged with accessory after the fact. 
He was found guilty by the court in assisting with throwing the body of the murdered girl into a flooded quarry. The cartoon is basically describing someone who assisted in planning the crime and then talking about the getaway is them talking about how they are planning to get away after the crime. For the last three elements of the crime, I'll be combi combining them. And those three elements are actus reus, mens rea, and criminal state of mind. Actus reus is commonly defined as a criminal act that was the result of voluntarily bodily movement. This describes a physical activity that harms another person or damages property. Anything from a physical assault or a murder to the destruction of public property would qualify as an actus reus. Mens rea refers to criminal intent. A mens rea refers to the state of mind statutorily required in order to convict a particular defendant of a particular crime. In general, a criminal conviction requires that the defendant act with a guilty mind. The law typically requires that a defendant act intentionally in order to be guilty, which leads into being criminally responsible. The term criminally responsible refers to a person's ability to understand his or her conduct at the time a crime is committed. In other words, what a person is thinking when he commits a crime, or what result is anticipated or expected when a crime is committed. It generally excuses unintentional conduct, but it often punishes reckless behavior. So basically, the actus reus is a physical component and the rens, mens rea is the mental side of the crime, and criminal state of mind ties into mens rea. All these things lead into creating a crime, as you can see with this picture. Lastly, looking at this cartoon, you see the bear is trying to plead temporally insanity, and this would be used to his defense to say that he was not criminally responsible as he was unaware of what he was doing at the time. Thank you.